Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals here. In this video, we're going to be talking about UDIMS and what that is. This is a topic I've seen a hell of a lot of confusion about. So we're just going to shed some light onto what UDIMS actually are, why they're useful, and just some general thoughts around the topic here. Yeah, we're going to cover a few basic things on where we use them in production and yeah. how, to, how it really makes your life easier sometimes and harder. I guess. <laughs> so we are using Maya for this tutorial here, but this is not a Maya UV mapping tutorial. We're not going to be showing specifically how to split your model up and all that. That will come in a later tutorial. So this is way, way more theoretical, how this is used in, in a production environment. Yeah, and we're also showing some stuff in Mari, but again, this is not a texturing tutorial. No. It's just a really good way for us to show you how the UDIMs are going to work. Yeah. So. By default, this is usually what you're used to in terms of UVs. Keep in mind, this is just layout by default. This is not super nice. But we have a little crocodile here who... Um, this is a pretty big crocodile. Yeah, though. it's a pretty big crocodile. His <laughs> name is Ferdinand, for anyone wondering. He's a very friendly crocodile. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> when you're doing something like this, one of the main challenges here is you need more resolution or when painting instead of a single map here. If you were to paint it, your entire map here, and you were to go this close up, it, this wouldn't work. If you were to start with maybe a 2K map, you would have to scale this up to a 4K map. And you, you just see that you don't have enough resolution. And the only way you can get more resolution onto this area is by uh, increasing the map you're painting on. So if you go to 2K, you have to go to 4K. That's not enough. You're talking 8K, and then 16K, and 32K. Yeah, it just and it's crazy. And it would just be insane. Like you, one thing you actually have to consider once you get up to map size is that big. Is that uh, so? I'm not like super technical on the whole rendering buffer thing, but the it has to load in that map, yeah. and that requires yeah. a lot of memory to load that in. So yeah. it, it can become a very inefficient way of rendering as well. Absolutely. So a better way instead of having one ginormous map here, which covers the entire thing, is to split this up into smaller maps. So we just used a quick UV set here. And um, this this guy now is split into 14 maps. So UDIMS is essentially that you're starting here at, at the default tile here. This is called 1001. This is called 1002, 1003, and so on. The advantage of this is it's sequential. So what what you might have done before is you have you have this called U1, V1, or whatnot. Mm. Uh, you have this minus one, minus one. Like it just get, gets crazy, and then it, you're just populating it around here. It does vary a little bit depending on the like. So let's say the Mari format is one way. You have mm. ZBrush has another way yeah. to recognize. Mudbox has a different yeah, way exactly. as well. But for this purpose, it's a, like we're. I mean, for any production, we're really always going with a Mari format. Yeah. This has been standardized. Like this, this came around. Uh, this this was introduced in in Mari. This was the first software to have UDIMs, as far as I know, at least commercially, and it's just such a huge help in a production environment because this has been standardized now. If you're writing maps out of ZBrush, you can totally write this out as a UDIM. So if you write out a displacement map, it's just going to keep the convention here. If mm. you, 1001 is always this one, 1002 is this one. If you want to take your texture maps into Nuke or After Effects or whatever to, to manipulate them, you just have one sequence to load in. If you were to have your map spread out here, here, and just all over the place in, in 10 different places, there isn't really a whole, there, there isn't really a good and standard way of, uh, of reading these files in. Yeah, I mean, like, just because you have UDIMs doesn't actually mean that it makes your life harder if you want. Let's say you wanted to do a, some edits to your maps, like Kenny Henshin with, mentioned with Nuke or, or yeah. After Effects. Like, if you just have one map, you know, you load in your one map, you, you do some contrast stuff on it, whatever. You could do the same thing with an entire sequence in Nuke yes. or After Effects and just render out the sequence. It's just the same thing. Exactly. So let's say you were to, you have all these maps here and you want to increase the contrast to all of them, which is something we do all the time. You have in, in Nuke, you have a single read node and you do your thing and you write it out again. And this is going to be able to, you're going to be able to pick this up in any render engine out there today. There might be some ex exceptions, but I, I, I haven't heard of those. Most software, no, most engines will be able to pick this up. So like I said, this always starts off with 1001. You never, ever, ever have negative tiles here. You don't put anything here, here, or here. You start at in, you start in this one. 
So this goes to 1002, 3, 4, etc. And then it starts at 1011, 12, 13, 14, and so on. And this goes to infinity up here, <laughs> essentially. Like there is no there is no limit to how many UDMs you can have. We worked on assets which have like uh, like spaceships and stuff like that. They can go crazy high. Because yeah. let's say Mr. Ferdinand here was a spaceship. <laughs> and you have like a you have like a, you have a shot which goes like this. And you go super close to one region, and you go super far away for, for other regions, and you go super close up again. That would be insane. Let's say there was a there was a film which involved uh, wars in space. What? <laughs> <laughs> they they have assets which are like equivalent to that, and particularly for something like that, you just need some some shows I, I worked on have had more than a thousand items. Yeah. Like it's absolutely bonkers, but you, that's just what you need. I mean, I've had a I've had a creature alone that was a hundred or hundred and twenty yeah. items, I think. But because it's because. What Ending mentioned that you you have instances where you need to have super close up shots, yeah. and others that are far away, so you kind of have to guard yourself against all of it. Yeah, and, sure. some, and sometimes you have specific maps that are just just high res in this one area. Like if you wanted to go, you had a close up of the eyes yeah. or whatever close to the eyes, you would maybe have a eight K map just for that area, but yeah. the rest would be four K. Yeah. Yeah, so this is something we do a lot, particularly in VFX, because if you're doing like a still image or whatnot, this is not that important, because you, you generally know what angle they're going to be viewed from. But yeah. hero characters in VFX particularly, like we, we've had shots where you, you have this character here and you go inside his mouth and you just <laughs> need that resolution for it. Sometimes you do shot specific stuff, but for a lot of times you just need, you need your character to be able to work from every angle and you need to literally work this close up where he goes... Poof, mm. Because we, we we go really really close up. Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, this is this is kind of different with VFX than than to games. Yeah. Like as far as I know, UDIMs are not being used in games. Maybe there's some UDIM trickery I'm not aware of. If you work in games and you use <laughs> UDIMs, please let us know. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, in VFX we go pretty crazy with this stuff. Yeah. So. So yeah, like they, it would go far above all this. Like it would go, it would go like it would fill up all of these, and will go about here for VFX. And these maps are probably 4K or 8K, mm. 8K depending on. Uh, your highest I worked, I think, is 150 UDMs, which is, which is <laughs> bonkers. Like <laughs> you shouldn't go that high unless you really, really have to. I mean, you know, for for modelers, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. You can just oh, yeah, just split it up. But once you get into Mari, they're like, oh man, I have to flip the maps now. And uh, <laughs> yeah, once you have to do changes across, like you tile something across 150 maps. Yeah, and rendering as well, it becomes very heavy yeah. as you go along. So for something like this character here, the 14 maps is is more than plenty. This is a personal project, so for, for this guy here, I, I wouldn't go above this. You could probably even go like four, five, six of them. Mm. But one of the advantages of having multiple UDIMs is they can also be used as selection sets, and we'll go a bit further on that later on here. But first off, let's uh, let's jump into Mari real quick here now. So here we have uh, we have our little crocodile here, and uh, we have a version here with UDIMs on, and we have a version with singles on here. So let's just explore the single one first. So I did an absolutely fantastic texture job on this, if I might say so myself. Yeah, I mean, professional texture artist right yeah, there. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about, guys. Upcoming tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> His eye isn't even <laughs> in the same place. That's amazing. <laughs> so this took about four seconds to project. Yeah. But the point, the point I want to make here is, uh, if you want more resolution on this, on this thing here, uh, if you want more resolution here, you can see that if you're painting, you're literally painting pixels, which obviously isn't gonna fly here. So if you want more resolution, like we said, you have to increase the map size. This is currently a 1K map, and this is this is for demonstration purposes. You would you would probably have a bit more yeah. than that. But let's say this is a 4K map, and then you need more resolution. You have to increase this now to 8K, and then 16K, and you're just gonna be in a really, really hard, you're gonna have a really hard time with that. Yeah, like we talked about before, now you have to increase it everywhere. Yeah. Like, in what scenario do you want the same resolution close up of the eye as you want underneath the feet, yeah. right? It, it's, it's, there's different resolutions for different things. Yeah. So if you look now at um, the Udim version, and we compare this, you can now see that we have a lot more resolution here. Obviously, the map we're using here is kind of terrible. And, you know, it's, 
it's not a good texture painting job here. But if you save for painting now, you can see you get a lot more resolution here. Before we were painting literal pixels, <laughs> but now you can actually get some variation here. And you can actually start to paint in some of this kind of stuff. Yeah, here. I got a nice tattoo. Yeah, he has a nice little <laughs> tribal tattoo here. <laughs> yeah, the, oh, that's a scary thought. A crocodile <laughs> with a tribal tattoo. Ferdinand has gone bad. <laughs> <laughs> so the pri like we said, just I want to just want to hammer this point. The pri the primary reason for Udems is resolution. And you know if Let's say you want more resolution in certain areas now. Now this is fairly easy to do. You can just go in here and you can just go in back into Maya, split this guy up a bit more and just add more resolution to these areas now. It's incredibly hard in this case here to add more resolution to them. Yes, you could scale the head up or whatnot, but it's there isn't a whole lot of space here. Like if you if you make this one bigger, you have to make the other one smaller. So definitely for high resolution stuff. You need Udems. Yeah, there are certain sacrifices with with the single one, I suppose. Yeah. And I mean, in terms of in terms of pure painting, when you're doing it in Mari, let's say you had a super nice single layout where you could actually just mirror, yeah. like on the x-axis from one to the other. You could do the same thing with 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 Udems, where you yes. just shift whatever you've painted on one tile, shift it to the next one. So it's not really a problem. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so what Morton is, is mentioning here is if you I'll show specific here. Let's say this was super nice, and the <laughs> left side here was this was the left side um, or right side, whatever. And you could mirror now. You could paint here, and you could just mirror this over right now. This would be super easy to do in Mari, and this was super easy to do in Photoshop or whatnot. If you if you have this setup here, obviously this is a bit harder to do. But we, we're going to make a future tutorial where we show mm. how insanely easy this is. That's like a future plug. Future, yeah. <laughs> or if you're watching this from the future, maybe you could check this out on our channel. I'm sure there'll be a link to it in the video <laughs> in the future. Yes. But so essentially, if you if you if you want to if you want to paint with symmetry in Mari here, you could easily do that as well. But. Uh, not for now. <laughs> oh, it's like a teaser. Yeah, it's a little teaser. Oh, that's unfair. <laughs> I mean, I guess this is like the first Mario video we actually do, so, yeah. like, so it's okay to tease a little We're bit. We're definitely going to be doing more Mario videos because mm. it, it, Mario is one of these software that, you know, I've been using Mario for like four or five years now, and I am actually a professional texture artist as well. I've been spending more than half my career painting in Mario, and I'm, I'm doing this day to day painting these kind of things here. So we need to just use this. We yeah. need to just get more Mario, to, well, not more Mario tutorials. We need, to get, we need to get Mario <laughs> tutorials out there because yeah. it's an amazing amazing tool. But I digress. <laughs> now, an interesting thing that Henning also talked about was selection sets. And yes. this is something that on a previous project, we've actually made a real good use of in terms mm -hmm. of uh, sculpting in ZBrush, yeah. where you, like if you have an entire model, like the same principle kind of applies when you're doing uh, sculpting mm -hmm. as when you're painting on your UDIM. Like if, if you imagine in ZBrush, let's say, you know, maybe, what do they increase the limit to? 80 million yeah, it's per subtool? But 80 million gets super heavy, right? Yeah. So if you were to subdivide your entire model up to 80 million versus you cut it off where the UDIMs are, yeah. like all of a sudden maybe you could have the head only be 20 million, the body combined is maybe 10 million or something like that. You wouldn't yeah. have to have one subtool that contains everything. And any any seams you would like any seam issues you would run into, you could either actually like on a project I did, uh, there I didn't even have seam issues <laughs> yeah. even though I sort of like ghetto split it up. Mm -hmm. um, but if you plan ahead really well, you probably wouldn't run into seam issues. But I mean, in worst case scenario, you could fix it in in Mari. So um, just step back back here to show what Morton is talking about. In in ZBrush here, if you have UDIMs, this model is the identical model as we're looking in Mari. If you go under Tool Polygroups and hit UV Group, you can see now that we have different parts of the model have different colors now. So it's actually split up. You can't see it, but it's <laughs> actually split up into UDIMs now. So this is this is crazy handy. So first, when you're just sculpting, this is handy because now you can be like, oh, I want to focus only on this side, on this hand, and you can now just sculpt this guy up here. Mm -hmm. But what Morton is talking about specifically, which is insanely useful, is we, we now subdivide this model up to around one million now. Let's say this was like eighty million, and you, and you actually couldn't sub or you couldn't subdivide this any higher. Yeah. And you want you have a hero shop of the head here. You need to just sculpt this like crazy. You can see that obviously we don't have enough resolution here, so we can subdivide. Subdivide it, but this subdivides the entire bloody model. Yeah, <laughs> which is a right now we're at pretend eighty million, yes. so we can't subdivide anymore. So the way you can do this now, now we can we can uh, separate the head out based on where the seams of the udims are, and then we can subdivide that part locally. 
which is crazy handy. It's a bit messy because now, now if you need to change your model later on, like y you have a split up model. And but you need to reproject back to it. Yes. It can be done. I've done it before. Yes. And most of the time when you have something that's that high res, you don't actually run into seam issues yeah. if you plan ahead. Yes. Like it's, it's, it's not something you just decide to do, trust me. I've seen this before in production. <laughs> Don't decide to just split it up halfway through. No. It's something that you kind of have to instinctively know that will happen. Yeah. And if you do it from the beginning, it's awesome. Yeah. So that's that's a really good way of doing it. So like we said here, in in ZBrush you have selection sets here, which is really useful. You know, you can just work on on the foot here, and and you don't have to make these. You don't have to make these in ZBrush. This is just based on your UVs. So sometimes I'll, I'll even do like a quick selection set just based on some super quick UVs just to have super clean selection sets here. But also in Mari as well, this is crazy handy as well. Like let's go back to the single version here. And right now you want to, uh, you want to isolate the hand here. You know, you could of course isolate the hand just with, uh, just with um, polygons, but the far more superior version is to go into the Udem and now if you hit the S key, again, I'm not gonna code too much into Mari here, but now we have a clear selection set. So now we can just hide this and it's super easy just to, uh, to, um, to hide and unhide versions here. If you wanna, if you, you can also do this right here in the UV editor and you can just hide this directly and you now have a clear selection of your thing. You can also, of course, save the, these selections so that you can very easily just with a single click, you can just get back to these selections here. Pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. So essentially, to sum up what UDIMs are, it's it's a system to which allows you to have far higher resolution on your model in a standardized system. So this is you can see here. You can see the coordinates. It's thousand and one, and you can see thousand and eleven. And this is always the same. Seabrush will read them the same. Arnold, Mari, V-Ray doesn't matter. It's a standardized system where you can now get your textures up and, and, and work with that system. Uh, it also um, it also doubles as selection sets and you could tons of cool stuff with that. Yeah, so I hope this demystifies the whole yes. Udem thing just a little bit. It's really not that hard. No. Once you just get your mind around a few things with splitting up your model and, and the Udem numbers. Yeah. I mean, I, I still don't remember the Udem numbers, <laughs> but I don't, it's whatever. It's it's really not that hard. Yeah. It's And it's going to make your life easier both in texturing and in terms of modeling. Yeah. So there's, uh, might as well try it. Yeah. So like we said, we will come with more specific videos in the future about this. This is purely to get an overview of what UDIMs are. So we really hope this here has been a useful video for you guys. And that, like Morgan said, that UDIMs have now properly been demystified. Woohoo! Woo and if you want to see more videos like this in the future, make sure to leave a comment down below, like and subscribe. Cool. And thank you for watching. Thanks, guys.